We've been so long in this reductionist society where we separate everything off into its own little silo and we don't see everything put together, which is just so incredibly ridiculous that we have this vast increase of knowledge and in my opinion, a vast decrease in understanding. So today's video was inspired by a few studies that I came across in my research and I set out to find out if what I knew in my gut was literally true and that's that the best way to provide for good, healthy, strong soil is to have livestock on it. And I obviously come from that bias and like any other scientific argument, I'm gonna back that up with some data today. Um, the main study that I found pointed out that 40% of the world agricultural soils are seriously degraded, whereas 24% of the area productive soils is still under continuous degradation. That's not a shock to any of us that are paying attention, but it's really good to identify the problem and then more importantly to come up with solutions. So there's no denying that industrial farming has produced these dead and toxic foods for a long time and in a large part that's because they looked at the soil as dirt that just held up the plants and they could just spray N, P, and K on it and make everything green and grow. And while yes it will make it green you end up having to add more and more chemicals to the soil and the biggest piece that they're missing is that great system that's going on down below the soil in the rhizosphere and we'll get into exactly what that is in a minute but basically that microbiome of the soil that makes it possible to take all the minerals and all the nutrients from the soil and process them and make them metabolites for the plants making it either useful crops for direct consumption by us or by our livestock so now that we've identified the problem, let's look at a few solutions. The research paper went on to say that the combined application of organic amendments, cover crops, fungal and bacteria inoculi could be a good approach to sustainable restoration of the soil. And of course we would agree with that. They also pointed out animals being a factor in that. So we're gonna go over a few steps that I believe can restore the soil and quite possibly produce more food than we ever imagined. You know, a lot of these research papers and their introductions talk about climate change, which we won't go into right now. They talk about population explosion. It's usually doomsday stuff. On the other hand, I wanna look at it like we have enough technology and enough amazing people that are interested in agriculture right now that we could produce more food than we ever need. You know, there was another study I looked at about farming that said that a half acre farm of raised beds could feed up to 30 people. So we obviously have a lot of these techniques underway already. We, we need to get to a point where we're treating the soil with respect and being good stewards of it. And I'm gonna go over a few steps that I think move us in that direction. It won't come as any shock to anybody that's been listening to and watching this channel for a while that rotational grazing is a huge piece of the process that we operate on land with our livestock. One of the reasons that we do that isn't just to harvest the most forage and produce the most meat from the animals or fiber, it's actually to do the most beneficial dance possible with the soil. One of the things they talked about in this research paper were being able to inoculate the soil directly with mycorrhizal fungi and beneficial bacteria and I'm all for that there's some really great ways you can do that and you might have to to complement the strains that are or are not in your soil at any given time but with rotational grazing we're taking the biome of various animals hopefully we're doing multi-species grazing various animals breaking down the plants in different manners and then depositing out the south end of those animals all of the remnants of their gut biome and all that carbon gets sequestered back into the soil as long as we're not spraying that soil down and we have a healthy biome underneath the the uh, layer of the soil so that's why rotational grazing though is just such an integral part 
You know, we've gone through so many years where industrial farming said, we'll just jam these animals full of grain. We'll, we'll put them on to 5% of the farm, get them off the fields, because, oh, by God, those animals do too much damage. And instead, we'll row crop these things to death and spray them with chemicals and then shove them with these plastic foods. No, we, we look at it differently. The soil and the animals benefit from rotational grazing from the animals actually out there being managed the way that they were intended to be. And for us to just think that in the last hundred years or so that we could shake off thousands of years of animal and soil husbandry and think that we know better is, is kind of shameful and a complete lack of stewardship. I, I guess I'm not going to spare anybody's feelings anymore, but the, the row cropping is essentially corporate greed and it's quite selfish because it doesn't leave much for future generations that are counting on that soil, which is one of the biggest investments we have in humanity is our soil. It's something we want to leave to our posterity. Right now, with all these chemical fertilizers that they're dumping on these fields, we're not only killing the soil, we're killing our waterways with, with all the accumulation of those nutrients in the waterways. And you don't need to go far down the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico to see the evidence. Another way that I see as being very practical for bringing probiotics to your soil are compost teas. And one of those would be like earthworm beds and earthworm tea, and then others would be direct compost teas. I would highly recommend, if you haven't seen it, the movie The Biggest Little Farm. You can get it on iTunes and a number of other places. But one of the most genius things they did was to tie in that earthworm bed and that, and that tea that they were generating into their irrigation system. And I couldn't stand behind that more. It's just absolute genius. And I would love to see more of that in California because California is one of the worst examples of just absolutely destroying the soil. Another thing that we get into again with the compost teas is we want varied brews so that we can support certain fungi and certain bacteria. And that goes back to just like multi-species grazing. We want that variety. That variety is gonna be a theme that carries through everything that we do in agriculture. We cannot do a monoculture in the soil with the livestock, with our amendments to the soil. Again, we're gonna come down to variety of cover crops, right season, right job that you're trying to do, whether it's break up soil, provide livestock fodder, et cetera. Um, but that variety, that whole theme of, of just having variety in all of our practices is gonna carry through, especially here. And a big piece of that could also be varied root depth to get down in there and dig up those minerals that aren't at the top layer and let those root systems on different types of plants bring them up to the surface into crops that we digest or ingest directly or through our livestock and produce healthier, full, dense, vibrant, living foods that we can actually thrive on. So earlier I talked about the rhizophere. Um, various species of bacteria and fungi play a key role in improving soil fertility. They all increase organic matter and then they boost the availability of that NPK in a natural form. And they can sequester carbon, they can make available nitrogen from the atmosphere, things that we don't need to burn fossil fuels and you know, generate more chemicals to douse fields with. There is a biological system devised by God who's going to be more genius than we could ever dream of that works to do these jobs. We can use our advanced technology to understand these systems better and work with them in concert and manage them with such a light touch. I'm not for let it go wild and don't do anything. Man is here and man is a part of nature. I'm for a light touch on the system, understanding the system and dancing with the system. So that's what's going on here. You have this incredibly intricate system dancing with each other in cooperation. And yes, there are pathogens in the soil, but just like your own biome in your stomach, those are only a problem when things are out of balance. And typically they're out of balance because of inputs or something that we're doing, some stimulus from the environment that is not correct. And instead of going nuclear with antibiotics on ourselves or in the soil, um, we, we should really look at the system and see how we can work with it. So just to wrap everything up and bring it back together here, I'm incredibly excited about these papers that are coming out right now, understanding how probiotic systems work in the soil, how they work in our body, how those two things are tied together. This is the direction of the channel 
is tying all of us back together. We've been so long in this reductionist society where we separate everything off into its own little silo and we don't see everything put together, which is just so incredibly ridiculous that we have this vast increase of knowledge and in my opinion, a vast decrease in understanding. So that's the mission of the channel is to tie all of this stuff together and hopefully not so that I can do it on the little bit of land that we happen to lease right now, but that you can go out and do it and find farmers that want to see a different future, that will be creative enough to work with you on lease programs and hopefully maybe even some financial institutions that finally get it together and want to make some real change by helping farmers get started. And especially your veteran farmers that there's a lot of uh, smoke out there about helping them but when it comes down to it, it's really hard to get started. So we as a society don't need to depend on the powers that be, but let's get together and make this happen. Let's reinvigorate the soil with life and, and just really complement instead of fight this intricate system that was designed to feed us and to let us thrive. This is Brian, it's been Restoration with Brian Gans, right? Another episode for you. I really look forward to the next video. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys watching these videos all the way through, hitting that like and subscribe button, and most importantly, sharing and talking about these subjects, hopefully in the comments down below, but also with your friends. This knowledge isn't something that um, some PhD has a license to hold on to for themselves, and, and quite honestly, they don't do that. They publish their stuff. We need to stop waiting on gatekeepers to bring us information, including myself. Go out and find out what you can uh, learn yourself, apply it, and let's change the world.